um, um, topic that you have to think about when you see that a company is so small and that it's merely a distributor is that maybe they don't have IP rights because they don't have, from other researches I did on the website, it appears that they don't have brand name products so they don't have to uh, stick their trademark on the products that they sell they do only this service of distribution so it's possible because it's a small company that it doesn't have um, IP rights, registered IP rights so as uh, trademarks and patents and uh, designs and so on but from uh, further research I found this web page that is mentioning that this company owns four brands and clicking on the category info I discovered that these brands are both uh, trademarks and service marks so they have this kind of IP rights I don't know if they have patent rights because maybe they don't invent nothing, nothing anything but uh, maybe in the future they will so this is also something that we can advise um, about in establishing this company in China and so we have to do a quick research also on John Mestitz just to see who is this guy and uh, by clicking his, by digi digiting his name on Google mm, I found this uh, website talking about him and uh, he appears to be a writer of scientific articles this is wrote by him, it's like three pages talking about technical stuff and scientific, scientific stuff so it seems that he really knows um, all the things involved by the business he's doing Okay, now let's have a quick due diligence uh, on the law firm. Matthew Arnold and Baldwin is a UK law firm, uh, medium size. Uh, it has about 30 partners and uh, 10 associates and 45 assistants and uh, cooperators. And uh, it's located in three offices in Watford, which is the main city of this county uh, of this Techno International, and is the same city in which Techno International has office and then they have an office in London in the center in Chancery Lane which is not so far from Piccadilly Circus so it's also a good location and then in another um, minor city so this is one of these guys is uh, Richard Gerstein it's a partner and uh, his areas of specialization are construction and commercial litigation it's interesting to see who are these lawyers because from their respective areas of specialization we can understand uh, which kind of issues the client is most, um, most interested in um, going deep and this is his colleague which is an associate which is the guy that directly contacts uh, our company because in the letter it's written that um, this guy which is a colleague of the other guy we saw just now and told them to contact our law firm and he's an, an associate and his areas of expertise are intellectual property, information technology e-commerce, commercial law, data protection so it's a quite a wide area so maybe the client is interested in just having a general opinion about he's not interested just in um, going deep only in one subject um, oh, it's very interesting he's interested in tennis <laughs> and he's a <laughs> playing and composing musician <laughs> okay this is funny um, yeah I, I like to because we have to be curious people so I found it really funny to, to go deep in all these details and investigative work uh, okay now I will give you some rules about how to answer so these are general criteria we have to uh, respect so try to answer briefly but at the same time accurately and clearly briefly because this is not a legal opinion and the client is not paying us we have just to show that we know what we're talking about we can provide assistance we know what he wants but we have to be briefly and uh, accurately however yeah because we have to show that we are professional and uh, we have to answer clearly remember that you're not talking to a lawyer you're talking to a businessman so try to use a simple language um, however it must be a professional language then 
to not talk about fees if it's not required. It's not professional to talk about fees now because we don't know so many information that we need to give an estimation of the fees. So uh, we can also risk lose the clients at this early stage if we talk about fees. So do not talk unless he will ask you. And if he will ask you before providing an estimation, ask more information. It's important to make the offer of assistance in our answer so that we can show the client, the potential client, that we are, we are willing and able to assist him. And be friendly, why not? Why we don't have to be friendly with him? So try to be relaxed in this answer and uh, also show respect. So be friendly, but show respect. For example, it's good to um, call him by name and surname because we don't know um, if he likes us to be so, so close to him at the moment. So just start talking to him by addressing him with his surname and then wait for his next move. If he will change and call us by name, so do we. We will do the same. And the last is to work in team. Our profession is not made for us to be an individual professionals. We have a law firm with many professionals. We are a team. We must cooperate. So it's better to have two minds on a case instead of only one. So try to cooperate with one of your colleagues. For example, we saw that this email is involving various aspects. One is the establishment, the establishment of this company involving corporate stuff. Another one is uh, IP, intellectual property, matter. So, for example, if you are a corporate specialized lawyer, try to contact a colleague of yours which is specialized in IP. And then, with the passing of the time, if this deal is going on, we will need also a tax lawyer or an accountant to work with to establish this company. Okay. The issue can be divided into three subgroups. The what, which is a woofer manufacturing. The where, which is Zhejiang province. And the how, which is minimum investment and very small company. So, in considering the what, we have to look to the how. Because actually, the how is influencing what we will do. So establishing this company. We see that the client is interested in a minimum investment and in setting up a very small company. This is actually influencing, for example, the business license. Because being a very small company in the manufacturing sphere, it will require to ask for a certain business scope. And if we enlarge this business scope, Maybe the authorities will require us to provide more initial, uh, a bigger initial capital. So all these factors are linked together. And we cannot look only at the what without considering the how. So the big issue, it seems really to be this minimum investment the client is interested to. These three uh, subgroups um, lead to these kind of arguments of issues that this case is involving. And so we have the initial capital for the setting up of this company, taxation matters, expenses for employees, which is um, regarding um, still the minimum investment because this client has also to think about how many employees he wants. We see it's a very small company, so maybe we, we need a few number of employees. And we have to look at the minimum wages, which are generally regulated by local regulations. So we have to look at the local regulations of Zhejiang province. And uh, we have IP matters. And last, the setup procedures to setting up this company. 